Hey, I'm Sam, and welcome to my channel. So, um, I apologise from the beginning of this video because the sound on my end is terrible. Uh, we had te technical problems in the beginning, and uh, I'm not sure why. I think it may have been something that I hadn't done properly at my end. My head isn't screwed on straight at the moment, so I apologise. And if this was a solo video, I just wouldn't publish it because the sound isn't great. But it's not a solo video, and uh, Corey has... Uh, you know, given me his time and um, we are trying to do something with these videos that, you know, offers uh, a different perspective from a, from an older, uh, an older perspective on, um, you know, living with the consequences of transition. Um, so I owe it to him to publish this video. So I apologise for the sound. Um, we'll probably do another one in a couple of weeks and uh, I'll, I'll just keep doing my solo videos for now. Um, yeah, I've got lots to say in my next solo video, which should be at the weekend. So I'll see you soon. Bye. Okay. So uh, if, do you, would you mind reading your thing that you read me a little bit of last week? It was a statement. I don't mind it, except that you have to... Oh, my statement. Sure. Regret. Because this is about regret. Yeah. I've well, got a couple of I mean, I've got I've got a couple of short things to read from David White. They're just a couple of sentences right. really on regret and honesty because the two are two are intimately intertwined really. You can't if you can't Okay, this Go ahead. Okay, so let's let's, let's begin. All right, we're beginning. We're beginning. Hello. How are you? Hello. Good. I I think the beginning is a good place to start anything. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, so we're going to talk about regret, um, post-transition regret. Um, All right. Which is something that's kind of, I'm still really connecting to, really, honestly. Um, so, yeah, still processing regret. How are you on your journey of regret? On my journey of regret? Well, I don't use the word regret. You don't. And and you asked me to use to to read some of my declaration and, yeah, and yeah, yeah. as I do, my declaration is from a legal document that's supporting a, a lawsuit. Um at the state level. Right. So did you want me to start with that or did you want to just cover regret a little bit first? Yeah. I mean that's interesting that you don't use the word regret. Um, why I is don't. That? Why is that? Well, why don't I read my declaration? Yeah, and if it's it. not, if it's not clear from my declaration, then we'll cover it afterwards. And okay, go on. Then it should be clear. Okay. So this is the last paragraph of my declaration, and before I talk about some of the trade-offs of transitioning and how there are things that I didn't understand until it was over. And in fact, things that I didn't understand until years later, mm -hmm. because when you start transition, the community tells you, maybe your doctors do too, or maybe they don't, but the community definitely tells you that transition is a thing that you accomplish, that once you have had all the medications and procedures and surgeries. And w once all of that is over, your transition is finished. And it's not. And that's something that has took, taken me years to learn. Uh, transition is a state that you enter into and you stay in. Because every important milestone that you encounter in your life, you're not going to be doing that as a member of your target sex or gender. You're doing it as somebody who is impersonating a, a member of the opposite sex. And because of that uh, extra complication, your, your transition goes on indefinitely. So that's the setup. Can I just say something? Um, Can I yeah. just say something? Yeah, I, I, I think I, I agree with that mostly, but... I think it's like the, the transition is, is something that's endless anyway for us as individuals, whether you are 
a transitioner or not. We're always transitioning as we grow and age and, and gain uh, self-knowledge and um, the ability to reflect on our past former selves and um, to experience change and hopefully become clearer and truer and um, more considered in our relationships. So I think, you know, when we, when we transition, yeah. or when, we, when we think we're transitioning, it's basically, you do get to a point where you just think, oh, okay, I need to transition out of this back to reality. So that's all I'd add to that, I think. Yeah, I, I would add one other piece to that, and then I'll read this, okay. which is that some, sometimes when you're transitioning, you're not transitioning uh, on a path of personal growth. You might be transitioning along a path of personal destruction. Oh, totally. Yeah, that's what I said, yeah. Uh, okay. And I think you and I have both been there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, and oh. and if you're going through a, a cycle of destruction, you're also doing it as a a, a person of your natal sex who is disguising themselves as the opposite sex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, no matter what sort of thing that you're experiencing, you you don't you don't ever hit the the goal. It's always yeah on the horizon. Mm. So with okay. that with that cheerful. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a cheerful one. Oh, it is. Um, <laughs> I've got I've got some tissues nearby if you need one. Oh. Unfortunately, I do understand some of these trade-offs. I'm sometimes asked if I regret having had a sex change as a teenager. It's difficult to wrap my mind around the enormity of the question. It's the most defining event in my life. I could not be the person I am today had it not happened. And I can't imagine who I would have been otherwise. It was a decision so immense that I could never have understood how it ended up affecting my life. Although I thought my transition would be over after the surgery, what I learned is that every major milestone of adulthood would come with it, a reminder that I could never really become the opposite sex. My friends found partners and married, but I struggled to form a lasting relationship since I was impersonating the opposite sex. As my sister was having children, I had no partner and no ability to have children of my own. In my attempts to become the opposite sex, I ended up in an in-between state that has left me alienated from both my natal sex and that which I aspired to become. As I consider my future, once again, the circumstances of my sex influence my planning for my retirement and geriatric care. I can never move on from a decision I made as a teenager. Do I regret it? It's like asking the survivor of a tornado whether he regrets choosing to live in a house that was destroyed. The immensity of the disaster beggars understanding. This has happened to me. I have made it happen to me. I can only try to live and thrive under the new reality. God, that's so powerful, that last line. Yeah. So, do I regret? Well, I mean, mm. how do I, I, I can regret, uh, like the, the, the biggest thing that I can wrap my brain around regretting is a, around uh, 13 years ago, I had a choice to go on and apply to a PhD program or to go to law school. And I picked law school. And I regret that. Okay. I wish I'd done a PhD program instead. Yeah, that's a manageable regret. Um, yeah, yeah. I can wrap my brain around it. Yeah, I think it, you know, for me though, I think it's not that there is this realization that you can't become the sex that you you were targeting, you know, or you thought you were when you transitioned. If that's not mm -hmm. the thing that's difficult for me. The thing that's difficult for me, because I, I think I never really believed that anyway. I was doing something that made me feel better about myself. And so I never really believed I was a woman anyway. But I, the thing that's difficult for me now is how do we become our own sex? 
how do we reconnect and embody you know how how are how are we how do we how do we how how can we be men that's that's the more that's the more challenging thing for me you're 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 confused sam we already are yeah no i get that i get that but like you said to me when we talked privately after the, the last conversation that you know just looking at yourself in the mirror when you have no clothes on you're like there's a dissonance oh, yeah. there it's it's there's a dissonance there, there it's confusing and you know so you're kind of like no matter what you feel and what you acknowledge as a reality that we are men there is this kind of like oh there's something dissonant and confusing here like if i if i wasn't confused before coming back to reality and sort of really connecting to a, a a greater sense of clarity about what I am as a, as a being and an individual. I, it, now there is a strange feeling being in this body, very strange. And it's, yeah. you know, I think there's a necessary kind of like numbing of that when you transition because you, you, you've got to believe it in some way. You've got to kind of say, oh yeah, this is the right thing to do. It works. I'm happy. And so you kind of can't let those dissonant feelings get in, I think. Yeah. Like you said, you, 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 what did you, you know what it's. You, you said alienated you know what it's from a your little own bit sex like. as well. Sorry, yeah. there's a lag. You go. There is. Well, I was gonna say it's it's like we've been uh, enchanted. Yeah, that's by, a good uh, word. In, into an into another form, right? Yeah. Enchanted by ourselves. Convinced by ourselves. Yeah, by a, by our younger our younger stupider yeah. selves. Yes, I've done like you know. Did you? I sent you a message and said rewatch minute thirty-two of our last video. I watched it and I laughed out loud. I watched it about six times and laughed out loud every single time because I said, you know, we all make mistakes, and you just went, yeah, you know. And I just I watched that over and over again, and I just thought, oh my god, it's just so funny, really, to see your reaction because you know, what else can you do, you know? you have to live with a light heart eventually and you have to get past it eventually. And then, you know, then you can't live with this like weight of regret on you. Um, like you said last week, it's, um, you know, what would you say to a young person who's kind of like just waking up and feeling regretful? This is your life. You know, I, I've got a shit ton of regrets in my life. Many, many different things. How I treated other people, how I treated myself, business decisions, relationship decisions. You know, so you can't sort of keep this tally of regret all the time and all these decisions that you wish you'd done differently. You just have to be aware of them. Feel that pain. Feel that pain because it's that pain that stops you doing it again and just try and live a, a, a better future, really. Which brings me to this thing I wanted to read. So this is um, David White, of course, my go-to resource at the moment. Great. And... Uh, this is, um, I'm going to read a couple of sentences on regret and then on honesty as well. So regret is a short, evocative and achingly beautiful word, an elegy to lost possibilities. Even in its brief enunciation, it is also a rarity and almost never heard except where the speaker insists that they have none, that they are brave and forward looking and could not. <laughs> And could not possibly imagine their life in any other way than it, than the way it is. To admit regret, <laughs> to to admit regret is to understand we are fallible, that there are powers in the world beyond us. To admit regret is to lose control not only of the past, but also the present. Um, not only of the difficult past, but of the very story we tell ourselves about our present. And yet, strangely, to admit sincere and abiding regret is one of our greatest but unspoken contemporary sins. Um, fully experienced, regret turns our eyes attentive and alert to a future possibility lived better than our past. So I'm just going to read one sentence on honesty because it's an integral part of regret. Honesty is reached through the doorway of grief and loss. Where we cannot go in our mind, our memory or our body is where we cannot be straight with another, with the world or with ourself. So if we can't admit regret, if we cannot admit that 
we wished we hadn't done something or we wished it would have been different. You know, are we being honest with ourselves? You know? Why? Why? Because a poet said that? Hey, it's not just a poet, he's a philosopher. Oh, well, I see. Well, no, I mean, you've got... If it's not, you've got it's your not, lifeline. It's not contradicting anything you just said. I'm just saying that, that you know, what is that? It's it's a string. Yeah. So if if this is if this is the your lifeline, mm. and you've made your mistake here, mm. and then acceptance is here, and regret is someplace in the middle. Yeah. Maybe you can just go from this point to this point, and forget all of this stuff in here, all that but rumination. It, but isn't that stuff in the middle of the, the, the processing and the, the teaching, you know? If we, if we not, didn't, if you're if, a, not if you're as shallow as I am. Oh, stop it. Good Lord. I don't, you listen. You, you deep people spend so much of your time thinking about things. But you just, at some point you just go, well, fuck. All right, well, here's the new, here's, yeah. here's the new state zero. Let's just keep going. But so how, how do you not repeat the same mistakes if you don't feel that pang of pain and regret? We're going to get into a into a, into a philosophical dis, philosophical discussion rather than I, I guess we will something that's kind of possibly helpful to others. Well, let me let me completely go in a separate direction for a second. Okay, go on. It's going to connect, I promise. Okay. So I was talking to a friend yesterday, and he's like, "I, I have a three day. It's a Memorial Day weekend here. I have a three day weekend that's like unstructured." And he said, "Well, how are things going?" And I was like, uh, I'm hardly getting anything done. And he said, why not? And I realized that, you know, I'm trying to reupholster some of my furniture, trying to do some cleanup of my porch, trying to do some other cleanup indoors, try to do some reorganization. There's a bunch of books I need to organize. Like I've, I've built this huge list of chores for myself. Then I've got this huge pile of emails that I need to get to as well. And uh, then there's there's a, a number of other activities that I'm trying to catch up on. And it's like, I have built a to-do list for myself mm. that has too many things on it. And I'm, I'm having that apathy that you get when, when there's too much weighing you down. Mm. And I need to figure out how to let go of some of the stuff that I'm committing myself to. And it might just be personal stupid stuff, and it might just be things that if I can chop chop down the, the work into small pieces, I can get pieces of it done. But I have, I have given myself too much to do, and I have to let go. <laughs> I don't want to laugh into the mic then and the messages the messages I've got too much stuff I've got to let go but, so okay this is this is this has some implications here because letting go oh. is it takes work to let go yeah it does yeah. um in in some sense I've got too much like I I have a pretty livable income right now and so I've got a bunch of shit stuff and I need to let some of that stuff go mm. so like whether that's packing it up and storing it or or selling it or giving it to the um, charity shop I just I, I need to let some stuff go so uh, what I would say is that regret guilt regret and guilt particularly I think sorrow yeah you know around decisions that we make are important to examine because we need to understand why we make the decisions we make and if we don't understand the sort of the currents within us that influence us that are just um, below our awareness you know fear unworthiness hope um, we're just going to keep making the same mistakes over and over again. And so for some people, transition might be just a very extreme manifestation of a, a certain process that they then relive repeatedly in their lives. So we need to examine 
regret and guilt and um, why we make certain decisions before we can even have a, a more, a, you know, a greater clarity in our self-knowledge. And like you said last week, self-knowledge is very important because if you're not aware of why you think like you do, why you make the decisions you do, yeah. why you feel pain at some of those decisions, yet you still make them again and again and again. You don't know who you are. You don't know why you think like you do. And you're just going to keep being a victim, like a passenger to all these forces within you that, that aren't really in your control. So we have to examine them before you can sort of like yeah. say, okay, okay, I know what I'm working with now. I know what's, what's influencing I, me. I, I think I know why I have a reaction against your your perspective. And I, I think I can put it into good terms that we might okay. both agree on, Sam, sure. which is that for me, uh, a, a, oh, you frozen. a similar word to regret would be self-recrimination. Subtle difference, but you can own your decisions without, well, without beating yourself up. Well, I know, but to me, regrets is a form of beating yourself up. Really? Yeah. Is it not just acknowledging the, the, the consequences of your actions that, that were possibly mis mistakes? Well, they are, but uh, to me, it has this extra level to it of wallowing, perhaps, mm -hmm. is the, the word I would go for, of oh, why did I do this? Why did I do this? Mm. Yeah, I don't think you can do that because it's just so huge. You've got to find some way of getting past it, you know? Well, well then... I mean, talking about maybe, transition in particular. Yeah. Maybe, maybe uh, the, something that we might agree on is if you are experiencing regret, that you should... Uh, stay stay in the shallow pools of uh, thinking about why you did something and avoid the the, the deeper end of uh, self pity, where the undercurrent might pull you all the way under. Yeah, I think I know what you mean. But the thing is, with um, very few people are able to change without being forced to by by their own suffering most people if they if they don't feel pain they won't change so there is a mechanism of change within the suffering of of acknowledging that you may have hurt yourself and other people and regretting that and also mm. in guilt as well guilt is, a, is another part of that not, I'm not talking about like some self you know self flagellation of guilt I'm talking about acknowledging that, that you hurt someone, you hurt yourself, um, and you you wouldn't make that decision again. That hmm. feeling, that pain, is what is what sort of facilitates change. Because if we if we just went, oh okay, that was a mistake. It's very 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 rare for somebody to say, oh, okay, I made a mistake, I won't make that again. People people need people need pain before they change i think most people most people do not not everybody but most people do because there's no there's no reason to change if you're not if, you, if you're just happy go lucky everything's fine and you're just you make a mistake and go oh you know never mind i'll carry on you you, you just you never have a reason to change it's just that's the mechanism of change within the human experience is suffering that's, that's my view anyway but but it doesn't mean that the suffering diminishes as you as you kind of become more aware but you just because it's just a part of life you you can't you can't avoid suffering but you can um try and tread a little more softly within your own life and the lives of others so you don't kind of spread it out that's what i would say in my own experience yeah i got i gotta think about that for a second okay you can watch this again that's, that's the beauty of I this will. thing that we're doing. But anyway, listen, we're getting we're getting into a philosophical um, conversation. I, I, you know, we are. How, how do we how do we offer something useful to those people that are deeply regretful of transition? Beyond saying, well, this is your life now, you've got to get used to it and try and get past it. Oh, 
sure. We could say you should cut your hair. You should throw <laughs> away all of your your clothing that is coated female. You should have your uh, breasts removed. You should go get phalloplasty. Um, you should start taking testosterone and uh, learn how to be a man. Yeah, that, that's a serious point you've just made, several serious points, because what do you, I mean, you can't do that. There are people that do that. I know there are people that do that. There, there's, a, there's a channel, I can't remember his name, but he's, right. he's, actually, he's actually done that. I think his name's Daniel. Return to Daniel, I think his that's name right. is. And he's a subscriber, I think. Mm -hmm. so you know if that works for you and you feel that's necessary then you know I, I personally wouldn't do that but you know how do we reconcile you know yeah I, I want to make a point about that because yeah. it doesn't undo anything it's just another layer like of... that 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 doesn't undo anything no. it's just another direction yeah 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 so if if what you're hoping for is that you can undo your transition, you cannot undo your transition. I would you can, say that, you can only do something different. I, I would I would say that the, the journey through transition and realizing you cannot be something you are not, and then coming back to yourself and saying, oh, okay, this is me, and uh, I better accept it. Um, we're always us. We just have to remove the illusions yes. and the ideas of we think we who we want to be. We're always us. We're always here. We're always who we really are. But we just yeah. need to reconnect with that. And then if you can reconnect with that, it doesn't really matter so much what you've what you've done to yourself. It doesn't really because you you, you know you we all live with um, difficulties of some description. The we all live with the consequences of being alive. Exactly. We suffer. We suffer, we yes. make mistakes. We suffer, we make mistakes. And I think this is, I, I was thinking about this before we got on this call, that I think for younger people, they, they don't understand that life can be full of regret and mistakes. And it's how we process them and how we kind of move past them and move on that really um, is the important thing. So, you know, transition feels like an absolute catastrophe to young people that have done this and they, and they regret it. Um, maybe it is, maybe it is, but you have no choice but to, but to find a way to be with it and move on with your life. You have to, and you will find fulfillment in other areas, but it yeah. is difficult. I mean, just your, the conversation that we had last week after we stopped recording, that you said there is still a strangeness when you see yourself in the mirror. There is still a strangeness. There is still a dissonance. So it's still there yep. even for you. And that's like how long? 35 years? 30 years? 30 years. 30 years, yeah. Yeah, it's still there. And, and, and there will always be. There will always yeah. be. Yeah. Me too. Me too. But do you, not, do you not feel sadness around that? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I feel I feel some oddness about it. But, oddness, yeah. You know, mm. um, the one thing that has the the one major consequence that I I did not understand about this pathway mm. is that it was going to make it so much more difficult for me to connect with other people. And I I sort of think that both. Well, yeah, I agree. Uh, I agree. psychically, yeah. like my my experiences are um, very different from other men's experiences and very different from other women's experiences. They're they're not. It's not easy for me to connect my experiences with anybody who, except for people who have been through this, mm -hmm. and that's not uh, a healthy population of people. So present company it, accepted, of course. You know, if I'd met you ten years ago, though, then would you would you be the exception, or would I be the exception? I don't think so. It's taken I, I, a long, yeah. long time. 
I pretty I pretty yeah. much always been like this. I think I'm more I'm more I'm more balanced than I've ever been in my life. But um, no, yeah, you're right. I think yeah, I yeah, there is that feeling of being isolated and othering ourselves. I think, but you know, yeah, and that's why we... even when you're talking about sexual desire, mm. it still is a barrier to to really being with somebody. What do you mean? Can you when you're me? pretend when you're pretending to be a member of the opposite sex mm. and you're with a partner who has has either sort of psychically forced themselves to mm. to believe that you are or I know for some people uh, there's the possibility that their partner doesn't even know that there's a how can you not you're, know? You're, how can you not know it doesn't it's it vaguely resembles a vagina but it's it doesn't feel like a vagina it doesn't how can you not know well i i think that we know that uh, men in a state of arousal are, are not as picky as they are outside of a state of arousal. Yeah, but they can't delude themselves completely into thinking they're with a woman when it just it just doesn't feel like a vagina. I know it doesn't. I clean it every fucking day. I know it doesn't. So, um, yeah, <clears throat> I I mean, it is strange, isn't it? Because I I remember having you know relationships with guys, and even during the act of sex, it was like you know, I'm pretending and this guy is kind of participating in something unreal. I mean, he might be okay, but I'm certainly not. And it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So you, it's like yeah. once that illusion breaks down, intimacy needs to take another form. There are other forms of intimacy, yep. but it is difficult. It is difficult. Yep. I think that's it. I mean... Yeah. Sorry, go on. Uh, well, to me, that's been, you know, again, I don't process regret quite the same way that you do, but that's been probably one of the most painful consequences, yeah. uh, physically and psychically. I think so, yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, it's just, I, I try, I, I know that when I think about that, how I crippled my ability to be intimate. I can't even allow myself to really feel it. I can't because it would be the the the, the weight of emotion around that is just would be yeah. too much. So I can't think about that too 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 much. I will I'll, I'll gradually process it, but at the moment it's just. I mean, I think that's why that's why I invested so heavily in in. The, the performance of it all, you know, I really went for it because it was like everything was on the surface. Everything was on the surface. And, you know, when it when intimacy became a part of the relationship, it was just, it completely threw me because I was like, oh, shit, this isn't actually real. Oh, my God. So it's de devastating, really, what we do to ourselves. But yeah. I think, you know, I think actually that's the most difficult thing to deal with. You know, the surgery and pretending to be something you're not for however many years of your life. People not knowing how to relate to you, othering yourself, all of that is difficult but manageable. What we've done to ourselves in inhibiting our ability to be truly sexually intimate with somebody in a way that connects that's the most profoundly damaging part of transition, I think. Um, yeah. yeah. There was a video going around about this man who's a non-binary uh, plastic surgeon in, in Oregon. Oh, I've seen it. Who, yeah. And I felt some rage stirring inside of me while I was Justified watching rage. him. Justified rage. Justified rage. Because from his point of view, he's saying, oh, I'm 
I'm helping people become their authentic self and helping them to achieve their embodiment goals. And he's talking about these non-binary surgeries that basically make people, uh, let, let's just, let's just be honest. These surgeries are designed to make people sexually, um, non-functional, yes. dysfunctional, sexually yeah. dysfunctional. Yeah. So he's, he is making people, uh, through, through making profit, he is surgically making people sexually dysfunctional and that, that gives him his own gender euphoria as a yeah, non-binary yeah. surgeon yep. because he is, he's crippling people. It's unreal. And, it? and the thing is that for, I think you and I probably share this in common, is that when we achieved our surgical goals, that there was this coping mechanism that mm. kicked in that said, I did it. This is what I wanted. Uh, really? This is my body. I'm so, I'm so happy. Uh, now, now uh, I just have to learn my new body. This is going to be great. I have to take care of it. Um, finally, I'm going to be able to have the intimacy that I dreamed of. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. And nope. Mm. And it, it takes you a while to go, oh, well, I was, I was mistaken to believe that there was some sort of real person, real sexed person, opposite sex person. Mm. I, I know you, you you never believed quite the same thing, Sam, but mm. I thought that there was a way that I could embody what I thought I was psychically. Mm. And I believed that there was a separation between my brain and my body. And in fact, um, you know, your nervous system goes down to, to the very tips of your body. Yeah. Your, your, your brain is your body. You can't c yeah, chop it yeah, off yeah, yeah, yeah. at this at the stem and and drop it in another yeah. uh, body and have it work because your 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 brain goes through uh, every every inch of your body. Yeah, you are your body. Such a good point. So we've removed a part of our body. It's just you know we just need to think about this in a, an objective way about how fucking insane it is, how absolutely fucking insane it is that this is supported in any way at all. And it's like a mass delusion. And the, the surgeons yeah. and the, the therapists that are enabling this, you know, in any sane world, like how, how do those people rationalize what they're doing? I mean, I, look, I don't, I don't I want to say anything cruel about Jazz Jennings. But look at that. If you cannot see what that's done to that, that poor individual, um, you know, what more evidence do you need? I never feel like myself. I never feel like myself. I've seen, I've seen Jazz Jennings say that over and over again. And, you know, Marcy Bowers, who's recently changed her tune on a few things. Damage limitation, I would say, because they know that, that things are going to start happening and, and people are, are going to, going to be looking for blood I think you know I think it's awful it's awful and I think that there's like an abdication of, of, of responsibility by the surgeon to just go well we you know I'm just a technician I don't make these decisions it's the psychiatrists that do the assessments um, I'm just a technician that's, right. that's what my surgeon said to me I'm just a technician um, and and it's what the patient wants Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy that yeah. we live in a, we live in a society where this, uh, this idea and many ideas are, are kind of become a false reality. You know, it's disassociation on a, on a mass scale. It is. And, and the, the people who support this stuff without ever with, while knowing that they're never going to go through it themselves, no. um, is sort of boggling to me because I think that they c 
construe uh, these types of surgeries as, as like having rhinoplasty. Yeah. Uh, if you don't like the shape of your nose, you can the doctor can go change the shape of it. But when you're tampering with people's uh, primary and secondary sex characteristics, that's a, a maybe a different category of plastic mm -hmm. surgery because the psychic impact is um, a, a lot more severe. Absolutely. I think your point about, you know, I think in a roundabout way, I'm paraphrasing what you said, but, you know, we are a distributed being within our own body. You know, you know, we have neurons around our gut, around our heart, and who knows how everything is connected and integral. Of course it's integral. We're a whole being. So you start chopping bits off, you're going to affect uh, the functioning of that being, maybe not in a in a noticeable way straight away, um, but I do feel a vagueness, and I felt a vagueness since I transitioned. It might be because you know the removal of testosterone and that sort of focus that it gives you, but you know I felt a vagueness ever since, and I think it's taken me twenty years, really, to kind of begin to get used to it I think but this part of me that doesn't want to get used to it um, yeah I want my connection back I think in some way you know so did, did you say that you, you'd started to introduce testosterone on a microdose no are you thinking uh, of possibly doing well that? if I could work with a an endocrinologist who understands where I'm coming from, I would consider it. Mm. But I'll, I'll tell you, um, I had my annual exam a few weeks ago. Oh yeah, you said yeah. yeah. And, and my doctor suggested actually increasing my estrogen dose. Really? And that was, yeah. They're just making it up as they go though. <laughs> Honestly. Well, it's it's from my lab results and she my my estrogen level was comparable to that of a woman who's in postmenopause yeah i'm just below it i'm on minimum dose now i'm a, yeah i mm. i am presently taking a minimum dose so you worried about bone density? You need to take more than. I mean, yeah. The um, I'm gonna see if I can pull up the the message that I got here. I mean, my, my doctors. Um, we talked about introducing a, a, a small dose of testosterone. I mean, I feel some fear around that. I do feel a lot, actually, a lot of fear around that. Um, of, of testosterone? I think so, yeah, because, I, you know, I've only just, as you've been watching my journey for the last few years, you know that I've, I'm only just kind of finding a, you know, a sense of balance, really, and emerging into a life uh, that uh, isn't... Um, you know, just incessantly question, questioning who the hell I am. But I don't really want to start upsetting that just yet. But it might it might be something I do in the future, I think. I, I get a lot of criticism from different sides for staying on estrogen. Yeah, I, th I think people don't understand what, what the transition even means, really. You know, it's not you're going to go back to being a, being a man again. It's, you know, you have to find a way of living with what you've done really i mean what's yeah we talked about this before yeah. anyway yeah okay go on. Yeah. have you found your yeah that's uh, i was looking for a message that oh. my doctor said I, I don't really do you do you feel anger not in general but do you feel anger around this issue that's uh, weird to, for, for not your question's not weird. I can't answer that without thinking about angry at, at who. 
Um, I'm I'm angry at the system that keeps yeah, yeah. perpetuating this. Yeah. So I I do have anger. It's not directed towards myself, and it's mm. really not directed towards anybody who is uh, trying to get some palliative relief from seeking these types of procedures. Yeah. But I am angry at the doctors who are so cynical about the the damage that they're doing that they th it, you listen to them i've heard this again and again oh my patients are so happy they're so relieved and that's because they've seen them at the the very highest point in the cycle yeah. of uh they've attained what they were seeking mm. they got the prize and they didn't realize that it's a cursed treasure so you beat the dragon, you open the chest, you got the ring, you mm -hmm. put it on, uh, you got the powers from it. That's the, that's the point that the doctor is, is seeing them. Mm -hmm. um, they, don't, they don't see them 10 years later where the, the, the hero who has won this quest realizes that the ring cannot come off the finger and it feeds on the souls of the people around them. <laughs> Oh, that's a great metaphor. But, yeah, I just think this is just absolutely insane. Why would you want to be something you're not? Why would you think that you were something you are not? If you haven't just been um, conditioned by your environment. Um, yeah. That's it, basically. So what is that environment it's so toxic that it's convincing people that, that you know slicing bits of your body off is a good thing um yeah that it makes you authentic isn't that funny oh it's isn't it isn't it funny the idea that the way that you become your authentic self is by removing parts mm. i think or, i was or adding on parts a, on um a wider lens, Sasha and Stella were interviewing some, someone a long time ago, I can't remember who it was, but he said time and time again, I hear my patients say, I was looking for authenticity and I found inauthentic inauthenticity, you know, I think that's a yeah. key thing. You can't, yeah, you can't pretend to be something you're not or someone you are not. Um, so, which could you try to shoot? Go on. My authentic self, Sam, is that I'm hilariously funny. Sometimes. <laughs> this may be one of those times. I'm not certain yet. I'll have to reflect on this. <laughs> I, 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 could use some, I could use some affirmation. Okay. You are, actually. You are very funny. You are. You are funny. That's why I think I, I always think Thank I always you. feel like I'm. I always feel like I've, I always feel like I've achieved something. Like to just when you laugh, I think I connected. I got, I got, I got a laugh. Just like that. It's always lovely to see you laugh. But um, so yeah, we were we were gonna try and keep these short. So let's let's round right. this off. Ra let's round this off now. Final yeah. thoughts on. I mean, you may again. You're probably the wrong person to be talking to about regret. What were we talking? What were we talking yeah. about last week? What was it last week? I can't even remember. You That's terrible. We're we're, <laughs> we're the creators of the last video, and we're like, oh, what did we talk? <laughs> uh, oh, uh, I think we talked about which shops we like to go to. Yeah. See, the, it's it's interesting though because we've got two two very different perspectives on this the whole thing about what it is to be a human. I think. And you know the nature of the human journey, but there is you know I think we both have a have a valuable insight, and I I you know I I, I like listening to your to your point of view, and it, um, I find it challenging sometimes, and it makes me challenge my own beliefs. Um, so, yeah, maybe you're the wrong person to ask about regret, um, but you know we have, you know like I said we've we've got two two different perspectives on you know we're hopefully offering something useful to younger people that are you know in the midst of devastating regret but you know looking at the I, amount I'd of say that I'm actually the right person to talk to though Sam 
because okay. it, at least if somebody's listening to us, they can they can say there are different ways of dealing yes. with this. Yes, there are. And there's not one model I have to follow, and I'm not a weirdo if I'm processing no. things in my own way. Because everybody's going to process, and and no matter what, everybody's processing. Even though I'm, uh, say that I'm shallow, I, I've I've been You're through a lot of my own yeah. process. Okay, let me ask you a question. Um, let me ask you a question. Sure. Do you think that <laughs> you you must process your emotions? You must process your emotions, otherwise you will <clears throat> bottle them up, and then they will eat away at you, and you'll get some kind of chronic illness. That's you know. That's, yeah. Oh, but so so regret is also an emotion that must be processed. You must be honest with yourself, otherwise you're just going no, everything's fine, everything's fine. And it's not fine at all. So it, acknowledging a mistake, acknowledging that you feel, fuck, I wish I hadn't done this. And that took me 20 years to even say that to myself. I remember having conversations with a friend about seven or eight years ago. And I sat there and I said, I think I might have made a mistake. And they went, what? What? You can't say that. You can't say that. What do you mean? Like. And, you know, it's like you're not allowed to you're not allowed to make mistakes. Like David White said, you're not allowed to make mistakes. It's a sin. So to say to say, you know what, I made a mistake. and I regret it. It's completely healthy, completely healthy. And actually, it's it shows a degree of um, individuality and, and strength to actually say that and not just kind of say, well, I'm not allowed to say this. If I say this, it's going to make other people uncomfortable. Fuck that. If you feel pain, if you feel regret, you must process it. You must process it. Otherwise, otherwise, you're just going to get ill, basically. It's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. But, you know, we need to acknowledge these things, I think. Okay, you can have the last word, Corey. Say something Pancakes. amazing. Pancakes. <laughs> okay. No, do you have any? Do you have anything further you want to add to my? Yeah. Um, so I I, I want to say two things. One is I hope that people who are working in this field will watch this video because I, we're we're too relatively mature. Uh, obviously, you're mature. I'm I'm, I'm ten years older. I'm nearly I'm nearly ten years older than you. Yeah, I think you I am. Be, you could be my older brother i feel somehow i feel i feel in some ways i feel younger than you that's that's just because of your looks <laughs> oh, um, well, believe me i had a high high res camera you'd see all the wrinkles and everything so uh the, the so i i hope people who practice will watch this because these sorts of conversations you're not going to hear between any two people who've had the surgery in the last year the last yeah. five years, probably. Um, and it's it's important to understand that even though you and I have still have very different perspectives on it, we still have uh, the benefit of having the the hindsight to yeah. and and the, the understanding of what how this has affected us. Uh, so that's one hope. The other hope is that I hope that the younger people who are watching this that have mm. been through some of these experiences will say, uh, yeah, even though Sam and, and Corey have, you know, spent the last hour talking about regret, they're both going to go do fulfilling things for the rest of their, their days and, and years ahead of them. Like mm. there's, there is still a way to get satisfaction out of life. Uh, for me, it's drinking coffee in the morning and staring at a wall for <laughs> eleven hours before I go to I go to bed. But that's satisfying to me. Uh, other people um, go out in nature, hike, um, play sports read. with friends, read, read poetry, whatever that is. And uh, <laughs> there's there's all sorts of things that people do to to get get satisfaction from their life it's even if it's a, a crushing and and disabilitating 
um, yeah. event that's happened to you, there's still things mm -hmm. in life that are, are worth while, worth your time. Yeah, there are. Yeah. I think that um, um, I think it would be something to do in the future, I think, to have, you know, we need support groups, I think, for, for younger people that are going through this because nobody understands nobody understands no healthcare professional understands unless they've been through it you know like i've, I've been finding that with dealing with uh, complex trauma like he I, I can sit there in a, in a counseling session with somebody that's read all the books and um learnt about it but unless you are talking to somebody that knows that really knows what it's like to live through these things not only can you not really fully respect their opinion um you can just sense that they don't understand, not fully, not intimately. So maybe that's something not, we can do. Not remotely. Not remotely. Either. Not remotely. Yeah. Can, can I can I leave you with a little Twitter exchange that sure. that I had recently that's that's been irritating me. <laughs> Are you sure this I'm is just, how we I'm want gonna, to end this? I'm going to read this. Yeah, it it, it is. It's it'll give okay. us some food to to process for the next time, maybe. So okay. I quote tweeted uh, somebody else who was talking about this Oregon surgeon who we talked about earlier. Yeah. And I, I wrote, I had vaginoplasty as a teenager and was left with a lifelong sense of insecurity about my body, even though things look okay cosmetically. Despite my experience, I cannot conceive of the psychic trauma of a non-binary genital surgery. All right. So then somebody who purports to be a professional trans health nerd replied to me, there's no psychic trauma from having access to individualized options, which is all this is actually talking about. I don't find it accurate or helpful to label any particular surgery as non-binary surgery, but the underlying concept you're demonizing is just basic good medical practice. Oh and God. I replied and said, what a diabolical mindset to call genital nullification surgery or penile preserving vaginoplasty as good medical practice. And uh, the exchange goes on a little bit there, but uh, I, I, I really do think that it is diabolical. Yeah, I do. To, Satanic. I, I, I think that... Even what we've been through has some qualities to it that are 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 pretty psychically uh, damaging. Oh, definitely. But, to, but but there at least was an attempt to from the doctors. I think even a good faith attempt. Uh, although I I know this will be um, contentious to say this. I think even a good faith attempt to try to preserve sexual function. Yeah, yeah. I mean, ultimately, it it didn't. Ultimately, it d it didn't help. But I think the surgeons that were were uh, performing what they did on you and I that there was yeah. an attempt to try to make us whole sexual beings. But when you're talking about the nullification surgery, or when you're talking about some of these other procedures that are designed to make a a, a monstrous appearance of somebody's genitals. That in 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 inhuman appearance to somebody's genitals, that that it's really um, in the realm of uh, Frankenstein surgeries. Yeah. So that does make me angry. I do think it is diabolical. Yeah. Um, I agree, but I think you know, I just don't know where this is going to end. I flip flop between hope that. There is like an equal and opposite reaction in the in the same population that um, is can see the, the the insanity of it all. But the worse it gets, the more people kind of the, the more that there is a divergence between the people that that are just rationalising and normalising the horror of everything. Um, of which transition and transitioning young people is just a part of multiple horrors in our civilization yes. um and you know i, I flip-flop between hope that, that it, it can't go on much longer 
but then this kind of ongoing push, like that article you sent me this week, that the the machine is moving onwards because there is a goal beyond which we, you know, the horizon that, that they know about that we don't, and it's to move us into a different kind of understanding of what it means to be human, modification, embedding technology, and all that kind of stuff. So, and the trans movement is just a part of that. So it's. It's not a world I want to be part of, really. So I'm just going to go and live in the, live in the woods. So I'll make a few more videos before then. So don't worry. Okay. On that happy note, uh, should we end there? I I was thoroughly impressed by your plan. <laughs> Get off into the woods. Yeah, I wouldn't last very long. Okay, I'll end there.